Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at the following differential equation, which was commented about in a previous video. I've generalized it a little bit, but the essence is still the same. So we wanna consider this following uh, operator. So we'll call it big D, and it'll be the derivative with respect to x minus this constant r. And our goal is to solve this differential equation d to the nth power on y equals e to the rx. So we wanna solve this for y. So let's notice that e to the rx is in the null space of this operator. So that means e to the rx will be a homogeneous solution to this differential equation, which adds to the interest here because that's also um, what we have for the right-hand side of this. Okay, so we're going to use the following lemma in order to solve this, and that is the following. So for k bigger than or equal to zero, and let's say it's a whole number, we have this operator to the nth power on x to the k e to the rx, so it's going to be this object. So n factorial, and then our binomial coefficient k choose n, x to the k minus n e to the rx. So let's prove this lemma first, we'll prove it with induction on um, n. So we'll use induction on capital N. So let's look at our base case. So that would be N equals, uh, well, let's do N equals one. Okay, good. So now notice here if we take uh, the derivative, or sorry, this operator D on X K E to the R X, so that's going to be the same thing as the derivative minus this constant r on x to the k e to the rx. Good. But that is going to be um, x to the k e to the rx prime minus rx to the k e to the rx. But now we'll use the product rule on this part. So that's going to give us uh, k times x to the k minus 1 e to the rx. So that's taking the derivative of this x to the k part plus r x to the k e to the rx minus r x to the k e to the rx. So now notice that these last two terms are going to cancel. Good. And that just gives us k times x to the k minus 1 e to the rx, but we can rewrite that as 1 factorial times k choose 1 uh, x to the k minus 1 e to the rx, which is of the form that we're going for down here. Okay, so let's make our induction hypothesis. So in this case, that will be, let's suppose the statement is true for capital N equals little n, and then we'll look at the n plus first case. So we're gonna write this as dn plus one uh, t um, operated on x to the k e to the rx. Okay, good. Now what we can do is separate this operator into the following. So we can do d dn x to the k e to the rx, like that. But now notice that's going to give us d on um, n factorial uh, k choose little n x to the k minus n e to the rx. And that's by the induction hypothesis. So we've used that on this bit right here. Okay, great. But now what we can do, since D is a linear operator, which is easy to check because the derivative is a linear operator and then multiplying by a constant is also a linear operator, we can factor this n factorial k choose n out. So we'll do that. So n factorial k choose n. And now we have D operated on x to the k minus n e to the rx. But what we can do here is use the base case because this is the same thing as d you know, to the first power. So that's gonna give us n factorial k choose n, but now we know that this should be k minus n choose one times one factorial, which I've left out because we don't really need that in there. And then x, 
to the k minus n minus 1 e to the rx. Okay, so now we've got just one little thing left to do, which is rewrite all of this term as the right sort of binomial coefficient, and I'm actually going to clean up the board so that we can do that at the top. Now let's use the definition of the binomial coefficient to put this in the right form. So we can write this as n factorial, and then this binomial coefficient we can write as k times k minus 1 all the way down to k minus n plus 1. So notice here we have a product that has n terms in it, which is what the binomial coefficient tells us to do, and then all of that is over n factorial. Okay, so now next we're going to multiply this by this binomial coefficient, which is k minus n over 1 factorial for the same reason. And now notice we can write this as x to the k minus n plus 1, as we discussed before, times e to the rx. But now it's not too hard to see that we can combine these two together, and that gives us exactly the binomial coefficient that we're looking for. In other words, it gives us the binomial coefficient k plus 1, choose n, and now we have x to the k minus n plus 1, e to the rx, which is exactly what we need to finish this induction proof. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board, and then we'll get to solving this differential equation. Okay, so now that we've proven our lemma, we can go about solving our differential equation. So we're going to do it as follows. So let's uh, say we have a solution of this form. Say it's e to the rx times a series k equals 0 to infinity of ck x to the k. So now notice we can write that as the sum k equals 0 to infinity of ck e to the rx ck times x to the k e to the rx. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is split this up into parts. So now let's write this as the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of ck x to the k e to the rx plus this single term c sub n x to the n e to the rx and then plus the sum uh, k equals n plus 1 to infinity of ck x to the k e to the rx. Now the next thing I want to do is act on this term with my uh, differential operator to the nth power and I'm going to use this lemma. So notice that if we take dny, so here we're going to get the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of ck and now we have n factorial and now we have k choose n and then x to the k e to the rx. Okay, good. And then notice here we're going to have cn and then n factorial n choose n of x to the n minus n e to the rx. Okay, good. And then finally this last term will be plus uh, the sum k equals n plus 1 to infinity of ck um, times n factorial k choose n x to the k minus n e to the rx. And then remember that our whole goal is for this to be equal to e to the rx. In other words, the right-hand side of our differential equation. So now let's notice some things. We have some simplifications here. First of all, notice that on the left-hand side of the equation, we've got this big sum where in our binomial coefficient, the top part is smaller than the bottom part. But since that's the case, all of these are equal to zero. And in fact, just the binomial coefficients are equal to zero, which what that tells us is that uh, C0 all the way up to Cn minus 1 are free variables. So this whole term right here uh, is the homogeneous solution. So let's write that down here. So this is actually yh, the homogeneous solution, because if we act on this with dn, we get zero. 
Okay, great. Now the next thing that we notice is on the right hand side of the equation we have e to the rx. We do not have any powers of e to the rx. But over here, this term has everything in it is a multiple of x because notice the smallest power of x here is x to the first. So in fact, we could factor an x out of this whole thing. But what that tells us is that all of these c's here have to be zero because there are no terms that are x times e to the rx on the right hand side. So that means all of this is equal to zero for a totally different reason. Um, in other words, c n plus one all the way up, all of those are equal to zero. Now that leaves us with one last thing, and that is this term and this term. So notice here we have x to the n minus n, so that is just the number one. And then we have n choose n, so that is again the number one. And now we can like really cancel e to the rx from the both sides of the equation, and that leaves us with c sub n, n factorial has to equal one, which is the coefficient of e to the rx on the right hand side of the equation. So what that gives us is c to the n is one over n factorial. So we've determined what all of our coefficients are. Everything past c to the n plus one has to be zero. Everything up to c to the n minus one is a free variable, corresponds to the homogeneous solution. And then c to the n, c sub n is one over n factorial. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll write that solution down carefully. Okay, so good. Now let's look at the summary of our solution. So our solution is uh, of the following form. So we have 1 over n factorial times x to the n e to the rx plus the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of ck x to the k e to the rx where these ck's are real numbers. So these are like our free variables. So notice we have an n-dimensional homogeneous solution and then this term which makes our particular solution. Okay, great, so that's the end of the video.